Shots fired, there she blows. Woohoo! This morning, I woke up to a little bit of drama in the Polygot community. I actually saw a couple of comments a couple of weeks ago in one of my clips from Oriental Pearl. Asian chick speaks perfect English, orders a hamburger, literally stuns McDonald's staff. Could you imagine how absurd a headline like that would be? Well, I wanted to respond to them then, and as things do, things got away, and as did the comment thread. And then I saw that Oriental Pearl had put up a clip today with a fellow polyglot, Walter, as well. A lot of people are kind of triggered about the genre of street videos, specifically people from the traditional polyglot community. And both Walter and I have done these, and there's a whole genre. And to be honest, it's kind of caused a little stir. Do we really, really need to have these, you know, white guy speaks perfect Chinese and shocks the locals? You hate the shocks natives videos. Oh. oh. <laughs> the problem with the whole polyglot subculture on YouTube is not that it's encouraging people to study languages. It, they make me uncomfortable they, um, yeah. for a lot of reasons. Oh yeah. Um, enough. It's encouraging people to pursue money, fame, power, respect, sex by living a lie. Now, first of all, I'd just like to say Oriental Pearl, I have immense respect for you and for Walter for what you've done. Your achievements in Japanese and Chinese are phenomenal and nothing should detract from that. And with Walter also, and while it's a bit of fun, you know, saying shots fired and there's this drama there, I hope that within the Polygot community and the language learning community at large across the world, that this isn't seen to be done with any kind of animosity. But as you mentioned in your clip, this is a discussion. I think it's an important discussion. Now. Have you changed my mind, Oriental Pearl? You and Valter brought up some really good points. So let me just go through it. But before I do, let me just frame this for people who have just jumped into the discussion now. You may have seen over the years, there have been these polyglot clips where people learning a language will go, and it usually happens within a Western country where maybe people will go and they'll hunt down people who speak a language that they're learning that might be Chinese, Japanese, Burmese, whatever it is and they'll go and set it up so the people get shocked when they turn around and they see maybe a white face speaking the language. And while this might be fun, I, along with other polyglots and other language learners, have put out some clips recently saying, look guys, are these kinds of clips really helpful? Are they really necessary? Do we really need them? And I put that out there, and so it's very fair that people like Oriental Pearl have responded, and it's great that we can have this discussion. So the pros for this are, look, these guys have put in the effort to learn, and sure, let them show off. That's fantastic that they've been able to achieve that and get kudos from anybody who is willing to give it and fair enough. Number two, and this is probably the main one, it's entertainment. People like this kind of stuff. The numbers don't lie. You look at people like Xiaoma, his channel, his numbers are phenomenal. And so obviously there's a market for this and it's entertaining for people. And I even put a clip up saying, did I call Xiaoma out? And I explained while they kind of make me cringe where I see these superlative kind of headlines, I totally get it why he does it. Xiaoma, he has really put his effort in over the years to speak Chinese the way he does and to build his skills to that level and even he said that when he first did these kind of clips because his friend suggested to do them he was kind of hesitant he thought oh seriously and he did it and there wasn't that much of a response but then he actually saw after a couple of weeks one of the clips really got traction he thought huh and so he kept going with it and if you're on a good thing why stop especially if it's making bank and I totally get it and I don't hold it against Xiaoma my point was, and this gets into then my position, or maybe it's shifted, but my position on why I'm not fond of this kind of shock clip genre for language learning. I think the first one was actually mentioned by you too in your clip just now, Oriental Pearl, and that was that you have these superlative headlines like, white guy shocks. Uh, I would go another step saying, perfect Thai, perfect Chinese. So there are two points there. Uh, white guy, it's usually white guy, a white person or Westerner shocks non-Western or non-brown person. The ironic thing about these comments is that, you know, people that claim to be so worldly and know, know so many languages don't even know the other language world of YouTube. <laughs> 
Oh my god! How do you speak Hindi? Oh, you know Hindi. <laughs> well, there are tons of videos of Japanese guys speaking Hindi, uh, shocking Indians here in Tokyo, or a Japanese woman who speaks fluent Hindi. She's got an entire channel, over a million subscribers. It's not a white guy thing or Western thing. It's the the fact that you wouldn't expect this person to know that language, and they took the time to learn it. And rightly so, Oriental Pearl mentioned that there are actually many Asian people and people who are not white that make these clips in reverse. And there was a clip put up there of a Japanese guy speaking Swahili and other languages. And fair enough, and it does go both ways. But you also mentioned that sometimes these reinforce the stereotypes. And this gets to the crux of my point. I do not live in a Western country. I haven't lived in a Western country for a long time. I have family here. I live in Thailand. And so my children are half. And my little daughter now, she is half and she actually looks quite Western. And so could you imagine if every action that you did, whether it were just going down to the corner 7-Eleven store, going in to buy some food or just doing anything, it was reacted to with <gasps> shock. Oh my goodness. And so just living here as a normal life, there is just a general desire to live normally. You don't want that. You want to live normally like everybody else. And so for me, one thing that I've learned over the years that there's one thing that trumps the way that you look and that's the way that you sound. So if you can develop native like prosody, it doesn't mean perfect, but native like prosody, you can often go under the radar of all of these kinds of shocks and just run a normal life. Now for my children, especially important even now as a almost two-year-old my daughter will walk in and she will go and mix with a bunch of Thai kids and many of these Thai kids will run away from her hide behind their parents the parents might pull away and then the parents will even refuse to speak in Thai to her even though they see that we're speaking Thai together and that she speaks Thai because they just anticipate that somebody who looks like this isn't going to speak it. Now, as my daughter grows up, this can have real psychological effects on her. I know because I've seen that happen across the region, in Indonesia, in here, in China, wherever I am. But one thing that I've noticed is if you can tweak your language as you grow up, and it depends on the people you're mixing with too, but there are ways that you can speak the language that minimizes this shock. And that's actually the way that I want to live. And that's the way that I hope my kids would want to live too. Not shocking people every time they open their mouth just because they speak the language. Hey, she's going to be a native speaker of Thai. It doesn't need to be this shock. It's just normal. And I don't think as she grows up and gets into it, she's going to find her groove and she will find out how to not get shocked reactions as well. And so my point in that one that I made before was if people are actually shocked at your language, there's probably something there that's a bit off to make them shocked because when you're really speaking it well, the shock reaction reduces and the way that you look matters less. The way you sound is the thing that matters. And so now this parlayed into a professional sense. In my work, I go in on the ground on oil and gas rigs, onshore, offshore. I work in a bunch of industries, aerospace, modern trade. And when I go into these companies, it's in my interest to have the difference between who we are minimized because the deal is that I go in there, I sit, they speak freely to me in their language. Now, if all they were were shocked and this guy is foreign, they're not going to share with me the things that they share that then help me see what's really going on in an organization and fix what's going on and then communicate that with the executives in the organization. So it's in my interest to not have shock value when I speak these languages. I do these kinds of things in Indonesian, in Thai, in Lao, in Malay, in Chinese. This is my bread and butter. And so to have shocked responses when I speak the language is actually going to work against me financially, in business, and my reputation within the business community 
community in which I work. And so when I speak a language, especially from this part of the world, I need to speak it in a way that's going to have the prosody that just gets pulled into here and let people feel that I'm just one of them and they can just speak to me freely. And then I can put that information together. Now, this is particularly poignant with one demographic that I work with, and this is militaries or people who work for certain agencies around the world who it's in their interest to blend in. Their job depends on them being able to blend in. And so I help work with these people and help them develop the level of skill that allows them to blend in with their environment, especially across Southeast Asia. And so they don't want this shock as well. They want to be able to go in, speak the language and just get their job done. I'm not saying these people are spying or something like that, but when they're in high level discussions, they want less shocked reaction and they want to be able to get to the meat of what they're there to speak about, often because they're of the national interests of the country and they just have to get their job done. So they need to minimize this foreignness in their language and speak it in a way that's just going to be able to get the job done. Now in Asia, that's particularly difficult to get to that level just because of that way that you look may look so different. But I found that in the way that you speak it, if you develop some good prosody, you can minimize the shock reaction. And so my goal for myself, or if I'm helping to work with other people is how do you get to a point where you don't get shocked? And so that was where I was coming from. I totally get it that people doing it, it's fun. It encourages a lot of people to learn maybe. Now I would say in that same thing that be careful of setting uh, faux standards of what fluency or what a level of language is because a lot of the time they say speaks perfect whatever language or speaks fluent sometimes it's not fluent and so that needs to be maybe less superfluous and people when they're learning a language great if it inspires them but make sure that you're not setting fake or false expectations of what a level of fluency is for that language because to get to those levels you really have to put in the yards anyway that was just a quick response I wish I could do more I have to jump into my work for the day. Um, but let's continue the dialogue. Have you changed my view on this, Oriental Pearl? Yeah, maybe. I can kind of see where it is and maybe I'll be a little less harsh on it. But I am an idealist, I guess, and I hope for a world one day where it's not a shock because the real magic happens when you're actually speaking the language and people speak from their hearts back to you, not just shocked at you. I'm Stuart J. Raj. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you.